a conversation with recruitment software provider Great People. That's next on the RecTech Podcast. Welcome to RecTech, the podcast where recruiting and technology intersect. Each month, you'll hear from vendors shaping the recruiting world, along with recruiters who'll tell you how they use technology to hire talent. Now, here's your host, the mad scientist of online recruiting, Chris Russell. All right, everyone, it's time for another edition of RecTech, the only podcast that helps employers and recruiters connect with more candidates through technology-inspired conversations. Today's show is a vendor edition. This episode is sponsored by our friends over at HireTool, the recruiter's best friend. HireTool's AI engine is a personal sourcing assistant. It works for you 24-7. Check out their new version 3, featuring a new reporting dashboard, email marketing campaigns that allow you to automate and track email response rates. And they've also redesigned the toolbox area to include more AI automation and updated their Boolean string builder. So if you want to help with your sourcing efforts, you'd be wise to uh, check them out at HireTool.com. It's H-I-R-E-T-U-A-L.com and tell them RecTech sent you. And just a reminder, the show is syndicated now on the HR Podcasters Network. Head over to HRPodcasters.com to find the show and discover dozens more that cover nearly every topic in HR and recruiting. Again, that's HRPodcasters.com. All right, let's get to the show. Great people describe themselves as this, a 100% purpose-built recruiting platform to deliver the unfair advantage companies demand to compete for talent around the world. Their platform brings together a CRM, recruiting, marketing, hiring, and onboarding together, providing a one-stop shop for talent ecosystems. The company, which is based in Newtown, Pennsylvania, raised $8 million in a Series B round of funding earlier this year and has continued to innovate through new functionality and features. Joining me on the phone today is their Chief Strategy Officer, Jack Koopman. Hey, Jack, welcome to RegTech. Hi, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate it and uh, happy to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. We've been uh, chatting for a number of months now, so it's good to uh, get to reconnect on the phone here. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so great, great people's had a busy couple of years. Um, I wonder if you could tell me just kind of a brief history of the company, uh, how it started, and, and where you are today. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so uh, if you don't mind, I'll rewind a little bit because I think how we came into this space is, is a little uh, interesting as well. So I'll rewind a little bit before great people. So we as a management team uh, back in early 2000s, I think we founded the company in, in 2000 by the name of uh, Virtual Edge. So we had a great run when uh, really the only recruitment technology out there was applicant tracking systems. And, and it, goodness, we know that it's, it's grown since then. So we had a great run. Uh, in 2006, uh, we were acquired by ADP, and we became the recruiting solution in that overall uh, scope of solutions that that uh, that they have. So, as you might expect, you know, at that time, there's people that stay with the organization, people that leave. I elected to stay with the organization. ADP kept making it uh, making it interesting. Virtualize really became kind of the linchpin in that shift of ADP moving from you know a pure payroll organization and kind of, you know, redefining themselves as a human capital uh, management provider. We as a management team, you know, appreciated that opportunity and knew that if an opportunity would present itself again to get, you know, let's say the band back together, we would want to do that. Mm-hmm. So kind of fast forward to 2010 when we were approached by a uh, global RPO organization that uh, wanted us to kind of architect a solution for them, right? So think about the tools that RPO organizations use to deliver their services out to uh, their clients. So the context was a bit different, right? Mm -hmm. We immediately needed to think about dealing with millions of job seekers, dealing with thousands of users, hundreds of companies, and of course every company's a little bit different in terms of, of their their strategy in terms of you know discovering, engaging, and hiring talent. So the majority of recruitment technology that they had looked at at that point in time was really uh, architected for the corporate environment, not necessarily for uh, for those organizations that are delivering services out there. So from our side, it was kind of like you know challenge accepted. So fast forward to today, um, that has been tremendous learning on our part. Uh, uh, with starting the development of that platform in 2010, we've been significantly expanding that platform and the organization to support all those things you mentioned in the introduction. Candidate relationship management, you know, recruitment marketing, applicant tracking, uh, onboarding, but all the different kind of initiatives that go into that as well for both the RPO and the corporate market. So we've got a long history in the space. 
you know, we walk like recruiters, we think like recruiters, we act like recruiters, and, and our focus is, is, like you had mentioned, is being able to kind of bring those technologies together mm -hmm. to deliver that unfair advantage to organizations to uh, find talent that they need for their organization. Nice. It's funny now, too, because EDP now has their own ATS again in their own uh, ecosystem, too, right? Yeah, they do. Yep. It's, it's, You're seeing that more and more, right? I mean, the um, I think that that's a, you know, ADP is an interesting animal in that they support everything from, you know, one or two uh, employee organizations up to, you know, 100,000 plus organizations. So uh, as we know in the market, no one solution really addresses all of those different need sets across those different industries and or uh, client size types out there. So that's where you'll see, you know, kind of multiple solutions in that area. Yeah, my fact, my, my I guess last week, uh, Alan Floor just they just got ADP his company, and they had a you know they basically gave him the ATS as kind of the default. So, um, it's you know if I were running a recruiting uh, in a company like that, that would kind of tick me off a bit. I think in terms of not letting me choose my own ATS that I have to work with. But story for another day. Yeah, uh, it, 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 like you know, sometimes those free solutions, Chris, are sometimes long term the most expensive, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just the amount of headache you have to deal with. Yeah, uh, somebody, exactly. You know. All right, well, so uh, where is Great People today? I mean, how big is the company? Um, give me a sense of uh, customer base, that kind of thing. Sure. So we are, uh, we're based out of Newtown, uh, Pennsylvania, which is in uh, Bucks County, about uh, 30, 40 minutes, uh, miles north of, of downtown uh, Center City. Um, we are probably just shy of about 100 employees today. Um, as shared, our focus is really on kind of the RPO side, uh, as well as the corporate client side. So we've got, gosh, probably, I don't know, 100, 150 different clients that are leveraging some part of our platform, whether it's the full platform, mm -hmm. uh, which is typically in our, in our direct space, or whether it is a, a combination of utilities or components of our platform uh, for the RPOs. You know, again, those RPOs typically work with, you know, client organizations that already have an ATS. So a lot of the work that we do in that RPO space, Chris, is providing you know, a set of tools that um, kind of complement those gaps that they may find in the ATS side. So it's things like event-based management or you know, event management, uh, employee referral, job board distribution, things that make that process work a little better, albeit it would not include things like the applicant tracking system yeah. uh, because that's already kind of inherent in that, in that uh, client organization. Gotcha. And the name Great People, where did that come from? Curious. And it's by the way, it's spelled, uh, yeah, by the way, it's spelled G R number eight, which I think is unique. Yep, G R G R number eight people dot com. Um, yeah, you know, that's one of the, 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 the fun points when starting an organization is, you know, how do you want to be referred to in the market and as such. So um, you know, I think when you look at that, you know, it starts with that word great, right? So go back to the book written by Jim Collins back in 2001 from Good to Great. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, every organization wants to be great. So when we think about when we think about recruiting or talent acquisition, you know, recruiting has to be great, right? It's the lifeblood of an organization. Uh, it either means a company meeting their their uh, um, their company objectives, their organizational objectives, or not, and and that's obviously you know critically important. Um, and then it's about the people. And, and I think often we think about the people being the candidates, the applicants, and the job seekers. And certainly that is critical to have a good facing with them. But, you know, part of our thinking was also about the people that deliver recruiting in an organization, those recruiters, you know, that are in the platform, you know, every day, uh, the sourcers that are in the platform every day, hiring managers that may interface with the technology every once in a while, leaders that want to look at the outcomes. Uh, and the such out there. So, you know, bring those um, two things together mm -hmm. and you've got great people. Do you remember the, you know, the moment of you know, coming up with that name? Were you in the room then? Or? Well, you know, I think that, I think it's one of those things that, you know, it's interesting when you have these little breaths of fresh air, it's like when you say something, you know, we should be great people. When there's silence in the room, you know you've hit on something that we all just kind of look at each other and go, wow, that that's it. And and I think that was that was what really resonated with us was that, it really focused on, on what we were trying to do was to enable organizations to bring great people, you know, identify them, discover them, engage with them, but also make sure that service was delivered by great people in the organization. Yeah. And this was back in, what, 2014, I think? Yeah. So when we started, I think we had, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was uh, you know, real early starting. I think we, I can't remember when we introduced the name. It may have been, it may have been 2014. Uh, it may have been even a little bit before that. I think 2014 was when, 
we, we kind of took the covers off of the organization. We had been in a partnership, uh, as I shared, with an RPO, and we started working at that point in time with other RPOs and started talking to uh, more corporate organizations. So I think it was probably right around that same time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's a crowded market out there, Jack, in recruiting software. I'll have to tell you that. Um, it just seems like there's a new recruiting software popping up every day, maybe every hour, if you ask some people. So, uh, <laughs> So I'm curious how you guys position yourselves. I mean, you talk about the RPO piece of it. Um, how do you guys differentiate yourself in the market right now, um, being, being that it is such a crowded market? Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think part of it is, is given our, our, our reputation, right? I mean, it, with, uh, with a virtual edge team, you know, we try to do the right thing every day, right? So I think this time around, uh, as the saying goes, we kind of see the fastballs coming a little bit slower now. And that gave us an opportunity to really start from a white sheet of paper and say, okay, if we want to re-architect the technology platform for recruiting, what would it look like? So, you know, the first thing that I think is important is, is our approach from a platform uh, perspective as opposed to a point solution. So when we look at everything that goes on within recruiting and you look at the technology stack, right, it's candidate relationship management, uh, applicant tracking, onboarding, recruitment marketing, career center hosting, job board distribution, um, um, you know, fill in the blank, right? Mm -hmm. So our approach was that we wanted to make sure that we had available a very broad platform uh, that covered all the different things. We like to think that we want to make an environment that recruiters log into in the morning, they log out of at night, and everything they need to do in between can be supported by the great people platform. So uh, our approach is really a platform with continuous de uh, development of those capabilities within that from, you know, social marketing, job board distribution, text messaging, um, engaging candidates, sourcing tools, and, and tools to you know drive value back into the organization, such as such as applicant tracking. So um, you know a platform approach is important because that gives an organization a place to grow within. So they may only take advantage of us with uh, with our candidate relationship uh, uh, software initially, but as they as they look at opportunities that their current ATS platform may be coming up in renewal, it's very easy for them to move in and us for for us to add that ATS capability into the mix. So that platform approach is key. Um, one of the things that we learned early on in our, in our experience in the RPO side was the value of workflow uh, to be able to help differentiate between the way that organizations source talent, the way that they hire talent, uh, whether that be driven by where they're, where they're hiring or discovering talent or, or what kind of role that person is. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, every organization is a little bit different. So uh, we spend a considerable amount of time and resources on architecting a, uh, a really robust workflow engine so that we can identify all the activities that happen in a sourcing process, in a recruiting process, and onboarding process and such, and to be able to kind of then define workflows based on the needs of the organization. So an organization may have one workflow for high volume talent, they may have another one for professional talent. Uh, that may be uh, augmented by the differences in terms of hiring people in Europe as it is in, in the US. So uh, a very dynamic workflow engine. Uh, and the real key there is not just telling somebody what the next step is, but when possible, using that workflow engine to make some of those decisions along the way and say, well, if you pass this step in the process, we're going to take you automatically to this step. So mm -hmm. a lot of that automation that organizations are looking for. Um, there's a key, uh, a keen element of self-service within our platform. Um, one of, this is one of those learnings from our virtual edge days. We want to make sure that we're extending to our client organizations and partners, you know, a tool set that they can change you know, the information they need to capture on a requisition or on a candidate, the, you know, changing a workflow for uh, a new location, a new operating area that they're, that they're moving into, uh, being able to change their career center design around and have different, you know, marketing assets or attributes into that. So there's a real big, you know, self-service aspect. And then, uh, and then it's kind of the global side. So when we think about working with organizations, um, I mean, every organization, whether you're a couple hundred employees or a couple hundred thousand employees, you know, have some some type of global play in mind or or in place today. So, mm -hmm. being able to make sure that we can deliver this platform around the globe uh, is critical, and I think a differentiator for us as well. And then at the end of the day, you know, uh, data is the new superpower, right? So, anything that you can learn about your recruiting process is key. So, we have an analytics engine that sits on top that uh, either serves up information to the user based on 
what they do with the new organization and tells them, here's how active you are, here's the areas you might want to take a look at, uh, or a full reporting workbench, they can kind of go in and drill in, drill out their own uh, specific information. So I think the platform, that workflow engine, the self-service, the global support, and then the, the intelligence at the end of the day are really the things that we, we work with clients and talk to them about differentiating great people. Nice. Yeah, you know, I think the workflow portion of that to me is, you know, it's one of the critical pieces of an ETS. And if you can't get that right, then, uh, you know, you're just going to uh, annoy the recruiters using it overall. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's pretty cool. I've, I've seen the platform listeners. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty robust system from top to bottom. Uh, so if you are out there in the market, definitely, uh, definitely consider them. So, Jack, who is your ideal customer? I mean, you talk about RPOs, but uh, is it just enterprise and RPOs? Does it go a little bit deeper than that or? Well, you know, I, I, you know, the two major segments are the RPO and, and then the corporate market. So in the RPO side, I think when I, when I think about the ideal, you know, prospect or client there, it's, you know, it's one that certainly values technology and, and understands the impact that it can have on how to deliver a quality and cost-effective service out to them. You know, we talk to RPOs about adopting great people as their operating system, right? It should be a solution that is used by all RPO users in all engagements because it should be fundamental to how they deliver their service out to organizations. So in that environment, those clients are using us for either short-term project-based um, uh, engagements or for long-term enterprise engagements and the such. Um, and then it also includes you know, an opportunity that as they want to kind of improve their positioning account, they can provide additional utilities through the platform like some of those things we talked about, right? Employee referral, uh, event management uh, and marketing, job board distribution, you know, career center hosting and, and design and the such. So there's a lot of different tools that, you know, it used to be RPO was really uh, primarily a staff augmentation solution. And now I think organizations are looking at RPOs as much more of a, of a consultative partner uh, to help them be stronger in delivering recruiting to their organization. So that is certainly one key market uh, for us as well out there. Interesting. You know, the, the corporate, corporate America, corporate globe uh, is another market, of course. So, you know, our ideal client in this area is really one that, again, I think values technology and the role that it can play uh, in, in really transforming the business. But they're probably one that, you know, over a course of many years have, you know, enlisted the services of multiple different recruiting technology. And not that they made the bad decision or a wrong decision of adding, you know, a CRM, you know, solution two years ago or a recruiting marketing solution last year. Those were the right decisions at the time. Mm -hmm. But technology advanced to a point now that you can invest in a platform and have access to all of those different, you know, components uh, in the mix there. So, you know, if they have all those different solutions, they're frustrated with the time and energy to assure all those platforms are working together. They recognize that the culmination of all those solutions really delivers an inconsistent user experience to not only the people using the system of the corp company, right, recruiters, um, sourcers, leaders, uh, um, you know, HR generalists and the such, but also to job seekers out there, which is, which is critically important. So, you know, in those cases, we deliver that same platform. Uh, it may be configured a little bit differently for the needs of that organization, different than the RPO side. Um, and, can, and that client can then grow within that platform and continue to adopt additional solutions that we continue to develop those uh, by great people. Gotcha. You know, what, uh, Jack, you've, you know, you've been in the business for a while. What have you learned about working with HR that you would tell uh, another HR tech startup, for example, to look out for if they're, as they're building your business? Does something come to mind uh, to you? Well, you know, I, I think it's the basics. I, you know, I, I, think, I think first off is, is really being able to start with the problem and not necessarily the solution. I think a lot of times when you, when you look at organizations, you look at the leadership in the organization, if you've got technologists and, and, uh, and that kind of people, they get enthralled uh, with technology and then are in search of the, the problem that that will solve uh, and the such. And so I think, you know, being able to kind of, you know, respect and understand the recruiting space and what are some of those challenges that, that are in there, and then be thoughtful about what is the right technology or service offering to kind of address that. So I think that's first and foremost. I think the, the second piece would be, you know, as, as, a, as a startup organization, wherever you are in that journey, you know, knowing who you serve is critically important, right? Do you want to have a, uh, a list of organizations that are, you know, over 25,000 employees, or do you want to play in the SMB business? Because that really impacts how you're going to execute your marketing strategies, how you're going to uh, sell, how you're going to implement, how you're going to service your, client, your, your contacts and the such. 
So, you know, the challenge is if you architect for, for the SMB space and all of your clients are in the large enterprise, well, you're going to be missing in terms of how to, how to support that type of an organization. And conversely, if you architect for the large organizations and find that most of your, your growth and everything is in the SMB side, you're going to see challenges in terms of how you're deploying the platform and servicing those clients. Um, and I think finally, you know, and this is based on my learnings, you know, through my career is that, you know, you've always got to be thoughtful and have a philosophy of organizational readiness. So, you know, it's not enough just to stand up a brand new product and a website and invest, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in the marketing engine and such in there. But you've got to have a, a, a really discreet philosophy in terms of how to grow all aspects of your business. Because as soon as you have success in the sales arm, it presents challenges on the implementation side. And once you have, you know, strong implementations, it presents challenges or opportunities on the service side. So really looking at how you can kind of scale all parts of your organization, both from a process perspective and from a people perspective. Because the people that you hire immediately, you know, at the start of your, of your journey are, are hopefully going to be on the ride with you for a long time, but their role in the organization may change. So I think it's important to really look at, you know, uh, what problem are you solving? Um, how are you, uh, you know, equipping the organization for success? And also, who do you want to be uh, of service to out there? Awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, let's take a quick break, listeners, sure. so I can tell you about my next sponsor, Robo Recruiter, and they're recruiting chatbot technology. So one of their features is called PALS, and it will update uh, and refresh their resumes in your database. So it reaches out to contacts to gather accurate, up-to-date information on their price, availability, location, and skills, along with other information. It'll collect and return information on dead mobile numbers, email addresses, so you won't waste your time in the future. RoboRecruiter does the dirty work, so you can spend more time having conversations that matter, and you can learn more over at roborecruiter.ai. So, uh, Jack, uh, let's talk about a quick couple of new uh, features for a second. Uh, you mentioned text. I'm curious, uh, how do you use text in the platform? What can the recruiter do with that? So, you know, text is now kind of the preferred communication, you know, mm -hmm. medium for a lot of different job seekers. So we use that uh, as a means to keep them updated through the course of their engagement with an organization, right? So those things that a, an applicant needs to do in support of the hiring process, you know, answering screening questions, confirming interview, uh, providing feedback, you know, uh, survey information, uh, viewing an offer letter, accepting an offer letter, um, you know, those are all kind of communicator links that can kind of communicate it out via text messaging. Mm -hmm. uh, text messaging uh, also in place for uh, kind of campaigning. So where where there was tremendous growth, uh, you know, not that long ago in terms of the use of, of email, which is still a good medium depending upon uh, the job seeker that you're looking at. But now text messaging becomes a campaign medium that you can you know, have a, uh, have a quicker message uh, that can go out to folks. Mm -hmm. It can still lead them and direct them to another path, another place in the organization to learn more about that. So I think if you think about things that recruiters used to do via phone uh, or via, via email, whether it be notifications or campaigns, that's where you're seeing text messaging kind of coming in. Um, but in this area, it's really tough to have a conversation about text messaging without talking about chat and such. So these are areas that we are exploring now in terms of how that as a medium can be used to really deliver a greater value uh, and respect the time of a job seeker, mm -hmm. uh, but conversely also turn around as value to the organization of a better engagement and, and uh, you know, with the job seeker capturing more information in a more conversational model as opposed to a push information out and wait, right? Mm -hmm. So that's been the old model. You also do, uh, debuted a campus and recruiting event uh, functionality this year. Can you talk briefly about that? I'm curious. Yeah. So, I mean, what we found was that, again, with that theme of platform, Chris, was that we found organizations, you know, that said, listen, I, I, uh, I get it. We, we're, we're working with you on ATS and CRM and recruiting marketing, uh, but I'm going on campus recruiting starting, you know, late summer, fall, or I'm running my own private events, uh, or I'm going to public job fairs and everything. And so uh, in that interest of making sure that, that we had components that uh, allowed them to kind of leverage, you know, our platform, we introduced uh, in, in two phases. So the first phase was kind of the base architecture to identify events and uh, communicate them out there, track people that attended uh, and the such. So if you think about it, these were, these were already components of our architecture, right? We already had uh, recruiting marketing tools. We already had uh, how to tag people with where they came from and the such. Uh, we already had ways to schedule interviews and capture feedback. So we brought those together 
and kind of tailored the solution. Uh, and just recently, we extended that uh, to be able to kind of have a, an at event uh, utility through a, a tablet device or your laptop that can work offline. So that now I can be walking around, I can capture information, I can you know scan a picture of somebody's resume, bring that into the environment, uh, and now you've got kind of an untethered um, mm -hmm. uh, application Did you that when you get back online, resume? you up. Yeah, so it take, basically takes a picture, can attach oh, to cool. that, yeah. and then we can kind of extract information from that. Yeah, yeah. So it's great in those environments. And, and they, that's an example, right? I mean, we introduced, um, you know, internal mobility. We introduced employee referral. But, you know, those are some of the things that we think about leveraging the main componentry of our platform mm -hmm. and then be able to kind of create these solutions that more times than not, the client would need to kind of go to another point solution. And, you know, you go to a point solution, now you have to figure out integration. How does it integrate, not just from a handshake perspective, but also how does it integrate into the workflow and the such. So we just find, and we hear this from our clients, that we make it that much easier to take advantage of new technology through our platform to meet their requirements. Yeah. Uh, just great stuff, Jay. Just a couple more questions for you. Number one, um, what's sure. the basic price point of the product? Can you give us a ballpark there? Uh, you know, I, I go back to know that is how long is a piece of string, right? So <laughs> it is, uh, and the answer to that is it depends. Uh, so the answer to that question is it depends as well. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll share with you kind of our models kind of in the RPO side mm -hmm. because it is much more uh, user-based. Uh, our model is, uh, is based upon the number of users that are engaged with our platform, whether they be recruiters or sources. That platform can also be extended over to the client side, so their recruiters can be part of the mix as well. When we work with uh, corporations, though, we work with them in, a, uh, in more of an enterprise model. And there we kind of value the number of employees they have in the organization as one component. And then also what parts of the platform that they want to take advantage of. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of organizations that, uh, you know, corporate clients that may only use our, our CRM component, right? Uh, they work with, uh, they already have an ATS system. So we kind of set the ATS and we set it on the side. And we basically build a financial model with them for um, utilization of the of the CRM tool. Um, and so, so once again, those components are really based on the number of employees and the parts of the of the platform that they leverage. Okay, what advice do you have for employers out there who are looking to bring in a new, you know, recruiting software like this? I mean, do you have a couple of things that uh, they should you know know going into this? Well, it's, it's never easy. Um, you know, I've got a lot of, uh, I've got tremendous appreciation for organizations that kind of go through this. So, you know, I think initially it is, you know, begin with the end in mind. So first off is really having a clear vision of what your future state looks like. You know, it's not, it's not enough to simply replace an existing platform. You really need to look at um, what is the problem? Because if you, if, you're, if you have the same problem, but a new solution is just a more expensive uh, solution to an old problem. So we always work with organizations in terms of saying, you know, what does the end look like and how much different is then than how you operate today? Because it should enable you to really have a strategic impact on the organization. I think the second piece, and, and I think organizations do this pretty well, is engaged stakeholders. You know, uh, until 2000, you know, when I joined Virtual Edge, I, I really didn't know much about HR technology and such. But one of my eyes wide open moments was looking at the number of people that are involved in that process just from within the organization. So, yeah. you know, recruiters, yeah. sources, leaders, hiring managers, and so on and so forth. Getting their voice captured in terms of what they need uh, and what drives value for them uh, is really critical so that you can have that impact on them. Because you've got a lot of different use cases. You've got recruiters that are in there all the time. You've got um, hiring managers that are in there whenever they have a need, more times than not. You've got leaders that are in there when they want to look at insights of what's going on. Um, and you've got others that the, 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 the presence of that technology has an impact on marketing, IT, and so on. So bringing all of those uh, into the mix. And, and finally, you know, don't be focused so much only on today's problems, but also on tomorrow's challenges. So making sure that you're not just solving for problems that you've got today, but we know, as you said, you know, uh, change is inevitable. And, and if there's ever a, uh, a, a storybook for that, it, it's the recruiting industry and the such. I think all of those apply to implementation as well, right? Make sure you have a clear definition of what, what great looks like. Uh, make sure you involve all stakeholders in the process. And, uh, and make sure you're positioning and framing yourself up to address any changes you've got coming down the road. Awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, last question. Um, you know, we talked earlier before the show st call started about your HR tech events that you're going to. 
uh, this year. So uh, rattle off a few of those and tell me, you know, how do you look at that from a marketing ROI standpoint? Because it's a it's a uh, definitely a big undertaking. It's expensive. I'm um, curious what you guys what your thoughts are on uh, you know, running the uh, recruiting circuit out there. Sure. Um, you know, early on we said we could spend you know, literally every week on the road, you know, attending an event. I think all of them are are important to a specific audience, right? So the ones that we have focused on in the past, we have always focused on events like ERE, you know, HCI, HR Tech, um, that have been kind of the mainstay out there. I think what's been exciting looking at the at the growth in this space has been more of these other type, more regional or more frequent uh, type events, things like HRTX. Uh, things like um, regional events like Learn, um, Candidate Experience, uh, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then we also have our own private events. But you know, we approach it. Uh, we approach it very methodically, right? What is the investment? What are the expectations that we have in terms of um, new contacts that we will have an opportunity to kind of talk to? Uh, like any provider, the acid test is always coming out of it. With how many live opportunities do we think that we're going to be able to in- be engaged with? Um, so certainly, there uh, you know the marketing side is when you look at the ROI, it's a combination of how it is supporting the sales channel there. So we're tracking everything from marketing qualified leads, moving into sales qualified leads to close uh, business and such. But we're also looking at a lot of these as branding opportunities as well. So a lot of these is is uh, is focused on on kind of the branding of great people out in the market at those events. Awesome, appreciate that. Well, that's uh, that's all our time today, Jack. I certainly appreciate the uh, conversation. Got a chance to learn more about uh, what Great People is up to. Uh, tell the listeners how to connect yeah. with you and, uh, and the company. Sure. So um, you connect with me. Take you know, find me up on Facebook. It's Jack Coatman, C O A P as in Paul, as my dad used to say, M A N. Uh, happy to connect with you and chat about all things recruiting. Our website is greatpeople.com, and that's G R the number eight people.com. And look for us at uh, at one of those events that I mentioned, and uh, hopefully we have a chance to connect and talk more recruiting with everybody. Sounds good, Jack. Well, that will do it for this edition of the RecTech Podcast. Thanks again to our sponsors, Hire Tool and Robo Recruiter. Don't forget to subscribe to this show via iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Stitcher Radio. Thanks for listening, everyone. And remember, always be recruiting. Another episode of RecTech is in the books. Follow Chris on Twitter at Chris Russell or visit RecTechMedia.com, where you can find the audio and links for this show on our blog. RecTech Media helps both HR tech firms and employers to get more clients or candidates through our consulting practice and online tools. So be sure to check out our sites like Recruiting Headlines, Job Fairing, and more to stay up to date on what's happening in recruiting. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon on the next episode of RecTech, the Recruiting Technology Podcast.